Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Vito Camera. Vito Camera is a real-time camera motion capture app that actually allows you to use your mobile device to get camera motion captures. So just in case you're thinking about getting realistic camera motion captures and you're thinking about an app that would be able to allow you to do that, that also offers plugins that you can actually grab for free right now this is the tool that you have been looking for now this tool is made specifically for those that are into layout scouting and also people that would like to take advantage of a tool like this to create some very nice handheld movement and for those who like to get this there's going to be a link in the description that will bring you right over to the website where you can get these free add-ons now the free add-ons you'll be getting is available for both blender and also maya depending on the versions that you're working with and of course you would need an accompanying app which is going to be for your mobile device and for that you need to go over to another link which is going to be in the description that will take you over to the app store where you would be able to get that now with that said we're going to dive directly into blender and take a look at how this actually works so with blender simply open right here all you need to do is go over to edit go over to preference and then install the add-on now with the add-on installed next thing you need to do is to press n on the keyboard and you'd notice that we have the virtual camera click on stat 7 and you would notice that we have the QR code. Now, if you already have this app installed on your device, you can actually go ahead and open this. And once you have it opened, you can now take the device and scan the QR code and automatically, this is definitely going to launch you into the app. The very first thing which you'd notice is it will urge you to pick a camera. And once you select the camera, click on done. Now you'll be able to preview what you would work in on the app. The UI looks extremely simple as you can see. There's a gigantic canvas where you can preview whatever you're working on. And we have a focal length section which you can use to increase and reduce the focal length of your camera. There's a playback control, there's a position scale, a smoothing scale, the locking of the X and the Y axis. And of course, you can also tie the camera to the view. Now, if you would like to work with the camera, what you need to do is once you tie it to the view, you can move the camera left and right just to calibrate it before you can actually control the camera within your viewport. And once that is good, now you can see that as we move the device that the camera moves within our viewport on the computer. Now, if you would like to see what the camera is actually taking a look at, after you've connected the camera and simply linked it up, you can tap on the canvas and this will turn on and directly on your device, you'll be able to see what the camera is seeing. And in this way, you can actually add direct your stuff properly. Now, there's just one downside to this as in some cases, depending on how many connections you've done over time, you might have to close the app and open it again just to get these things working properly. So with the junk gear sim simply open right here, you can choose to lock the X and the Z axis. And with that locked, you can now move only within the Y axis. Now, this is going to be very useful if you just want the camera to be in one position and just simply move left and right. Probably don't want it to move forward. You won't, don't want it to you know, change the direction, like move upwards and downwards. This is definitely going to be very useful. Now, for those who would like to also just lock the y axis and you know do some zooming effect moving forward moving back this is definitely going to be very very cool if this is something you would like to do now in most cases you might also have questions like can i record the scene which i'm working on or can i record the camera movement and yes you can so if you hit on the record button you'll be able to record this and you can move in any given direction that you want depending on the space that you have within where you're working, this could be limiting or this can actually open up a whole new world of possibilities for you. So in this case, once you're done doing that, you can now press on the playback and pause button that can help you playback and you'll be able to see what you've just created. So you can actually have a lot of fun working with this going back and forth. And I've also found out that these two can also double as a second display. So think about it right here i have an ipad you know 2020 pro and what we can do with this is we can choose to switch any of the cameras that we want to work with and with that camera done we can go into the pc and select that same view and start working with the view now this makes a lot of sense for those who would like to simply have another display by the side probably for color grading issues or maybe you just want to have it as a second monitor while you work on your PC. I've also found this tool as a great use. Instead of running with connectors, this is definitely something that can save you that time and save you that extra resource. So with this said, let's dive directly into Maya and also see how this one works with Maya. So with Maya, this is a little bit 
different of course everything looks the same but it's just a slightly different so the difference actually starts up with how you install so for my for you to install you need to go over to windows go over to settings and preferences and you get to see the plugin manager now within the plugin manager if you click on the browse button you'll be able to find the python file which you might have downloaded earlier and you can select it and apply that to Maya. So once you have this ready, if you go over to the tab, which is now the virtual camera, you can notice that there's an icon there. Click on the icon. Now you notice that we have a simple window that pops up. Now with the window popping up, you can now click on start serving and that would automatically create a QR code which you can scan with your device. And with that device, you would now notice that it also gives you the same option of selecting a given camera. So in this case, we have two cameras, the simple camera one and also the perspective camera. And I'm just simply going to go ahead and select one of the cameras. So the scene which we have here is a very, very, um, you know, it's sort of like a complicated scene, but it's quite easy to explain as this scene is one of the project scenes that we're working on currently. And this has to do with the Famagusta castle. So it's a very ancient city that we have right here. And what we did was we went around there, did a couple of photogrammetry, and now we are still within the phase of constructing the remaining parts. So it's quite interesting to see that we can actually use this for a real world situation. So hopefully if you're working with large scenes like this, this is definitely going to be very useful for layout and scouting. And depending on what you like to do with this, this can actually come in very, very handy. So with this scene here, we can now move back and forth, you know, move around. So exactly like what you can do with Blender, that is what you can do with this tool. Now, one of the drawbacks for Maya that I did find is contrary to Blender, where you can have multiple windows open and you can, you know, preview these things in real time from different windows and, you know, on different screens. In Maya, you're limited to just one screen. It doesn't matter whether you scale it, it doesn't matter whether you try to resize this, you're simply you know relegated to one full box and uh, that is all you get now the second thing which i did also notice with maya that i kind of didn't notice with blender is in maya for some reason i don't know if this is you know from me or if it's from the software but for some reason once you do a simple playback you might end up noticing that if the you know the timeline is extremely long like for this case, I had to step all the way back from the desk just to make like a very long recording. Once I'm previewing this with the V2 camera on the app, I did notice that there's a couple of lags in the beginning and then it picks up speed and uh, simply plays back. So I don't know if this is a bug, but then if you also experience something like this, this is actually what it looks like right now. But of course, this is not a setback. I just kind of think that it might just be a Maya problem as it's not something that is particularly related to blender as we speak so before we go let's take a look at some of the things that you need to keep in mind now virtual camera is amazing it's pretty cool but there are certain things that you need to keep in mind while trying to work with this tool now first off your pc and your mobile device need to be on the same network a hotspot would not cut this for you a public wi-fi would not cut this for you as i did try this in the university and it didn't work and i had to you know come all the way back home to do it now secondly you also need to make sure that the apps, the both apps are not open at the same time. And what I mean by this is you can only get Maya to be working at the point and then you stop Maya and move over to Blender and start up the virtual camera. Now this way you would actually have fun working with the app. Trying to connect the both of them at the same time would definitely not work as this actually has one port and it only listens to one connection at a given time. Now with that said as well, in most cases you might also get into issues where the camera isn't coming on and uh, some other stuff like that. The fix for this is super super easy. Now the fix for this is extremely simple and all you have to do is just close the app and open it back up and that is it. So whenever you have any issues, first things you should do is close the app, turn it back on and you'll be fine. You hardly have problems like this, maybe except you've connected severally, but then if you do, the solution for that is just to simply close it and open it back up. And that's more like it. For those who like to do things like set dressing and maybe if you're into layout, you might simply go ahead and take a look at this. And for those who would like to test this out, there's also going to be a link in the description that will take you over to the App Store where you can download this and also over to the website where you can get this free add-ons and start playing with it. Link to all of this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out.
Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.